Hello, my name is Alan Sanfi at the Donders Institute for Brain, Cognition and Behaviour at Radboud University, Nijmegen. And together with my co-author Luke Chang at the University of Arizona, we'd like to tell you about our paper, Triangulating the Neural, Psychological and Economic Bases of Guilt Aversion. The questions our group are interested in concern how people make decisions in social situations. Specifically, we are interested in the processes that underlie cooperative behaviour, and in particular cooperative behaviour that comes at a personal cost. Why are we often willing to help someone else when it will cost us time, money or stress? For example, why do we usually leave a tip in a restaurant that we know for sure we'll never visit again? Or why do we feel obliged to help someone when they ask us to keep an eye on their belongings? This is an interesting question, as the notion of cooperation at personal cost is a problem that's vexed classical economics, which over the years has argued that people are solely motivated by self-interest. To address this discrepancy, most theories have proposed that people might give because it feels inherently good to give. However, a novel alternative motivation for cooperation is that we don't give because it feels good to give, but rather because it feels bad not to. That is, the feeling of guilt may play a role in promoting cooperative behaviour. Guilt can be operationalized as a negative affective state resulting from letting a relationship partner down. However, these types of emotions can be difficult to both measure and elicit in a laboratory setting. So here we utilize the task and model from economics to allow us to quantify how people use guilt in making their decisions. In collaboration with doctors Alex Smith and Martin Duvenberg, our colleagues in the economics department, we used a theoretical approach which allows us to quantify individuals' belief-dependent emotions in a formal model of decision utility. Importantly, this allows us to calculate independent motivations in the decision process related to maximizing financial reward and minimizing anticipated guilt. To do this, we adapted a task from behavioral economics known as the trust game that provides a measure of cooperation in a simple two-player game. Player 1 is first given some money and then can invest this money with player 2. Whatever amount they choose to invest is multiplied by a factor of 4 and player 2 then decides how much of this multiplied amount they want to return to player 1, if any. Importantly, we added a crucial modification to this game which allowed us to study guilt by listening both players' expectations. 30 participants first played as player 1. They decided how much money they wanted to invest in each player and reported the amount they expected them to return. 17 of these participants then played as player 2 while undergoing functional magnetic resonance imaging. For each trial, participants saw the offers made to them in the first session and then decided how much money they actually wanted to return. We also asked them how much they believed the partner expected them to return. At the end of the experiment, players saw a recap of each trial and were asked to report their subjective counterfactual guilt. We found that on average, player 1's invested about half of their $10 endowment with player 2 Consistent with our model of guilt aversion, participants appear to use these beliefs to guide their decision-making behavior as they typically return close to the amount that they believe their partner expected them to return. We believe that minimizing anticipated guilt was the motivation for matching expectations as players reported that they would have felt more counterfactual guilt had they chosen to return less money than they actually did. In our fMRI analysis, we compared trials in which participants match expectations of the partner, that is, returning the amount that they believe the partner expected, to trials in which they return less than they believe their partner expected. We found that matching your partner's expectations was associated with increased activity in the right insula, anterior cingulate cortex, supplementary motor cortex, bilateral dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, and temporal parietal junction. These regions have previously been associated with processing negative affect, empathy, and theory of mind. In contrast, returning less than was expected was associated with the ventral and dorsal medial prefrontal cortex and bilateral nucleus accumbens, regions that have previously been associated with processing value and monetary rewards. We believe these results are exciting because they provide support for the theory of moral sentiments, in which people appear to have competing motivations to on one hand minimize the experience of future guilt, and on the other to maximize their financial reward. A neural signal originating in areas that have often been associated with negative emotions appears to motivate participants to cooperate and avoid disappointing a relationship partner. This provides good evidence in our opinion that negative emotions, such as guilt, can also be responsible for cooperative behaviour, and provides additional important clues as to why we often cooperate at a personal cost. Additionally, we think this study demonstrates the usefulness of a decision neuroscience approach to the study of decision making, and the idea of testing a formal, psychologically and economically inspired model in conjunction with brain imaging 
can yield useful insights as to how we make decisions in a social environment.